thank you so much for having me. It's a massive privilege to be here and you know, thank you to the team at Campus Media for inviting me and it's actually great to be back here at the IET. Um, this room especially means a lot to me and I'm sure some other people in this room feel the same. So, as Amanda said, my name's Amber O'Connor, but I guess the real question is, who am I? So I'm just going to tell you a couple of things about me. So I'm a geek through and through. I will gladly admit it. I'm proud of it. Um, I'd like to think that I'm a little bit creative. Some people might question that slightly, but I think that I am. I am absolutely crazy about cars. Anyone who knows me will say it, but don't worry, I'm not going to talk about them too much, but I might sneak something in. I absolutely love maths. When I was younger, it was the thing that I really enjoyed doing. To a point when I was about nine or 10, it came up to the summer holidays and I just didn't want to stop going to school. I just loved maths. So I actually went to space school it was sort of a two-week space program, and I went to the space station um, in Leicester, and it was the most amazing experience ever. But that didn't necessarily make me think that I wanted to be an engineer. I just really liked math. I'm also a mom. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and it's the most rewarding thing in the world, and I absolutely love it. But I guess the main thing is that actually I'm an engineer and that's why I'm here today to talk to you is about me as an engineer and you know where I've come from. So how did I actually get into engineering? That's the big question. But actually I thought I'd share some really embarrassing photos just to show you who I am first. So pretty normal embarrassing snow photos. Let's throw in a holiday beat snap because who doesn't have them? Um, then cue the really lovely hairstyle that is pretty consistent throughout, it appears. Um, so, you know, I said that I was creative. I think to me, my generation, this is going to make me sound old, but I swear that I'm not that old. Um, but it was before the iPad. And, you know, not everyone had a mobile phone attached to them. So we went out and we played in the dirt. And we painted pine cones and we did loads of things. And I think that that's where my creativity started to come out. So I tried to find a lovely photo about the time that I went to space school. This nice, consistent haircut coming through here. Um, and yeah, I just, I really loved maths. But, you know, they, it, engineering wasn't something that I was aware of. So then when I was going through all of my family photos, I realized something that there was actually quite a big gap between this photo and you know, later on into my teenage years. And for me, it was because when I went to secondary school is that everyone sort of, of my age went through a bit of a phase and it was, you were either an emo or you were a chav. I mean, does anyone want to hazard a guess at what I was? And don't worry, cue the embarrassing photo because I'm going to show you. I was a lovely emo with my, you know, great style, <laughs> the back combed hair. I mean, maybe we should bring that back. Um, but I guess the question is, why, why am I sharing all these really embarrassing photos with you? And really, I just wanted to show that I was pretty normal. I had a very normal upbringing. I went to public school. Yeah, I really enjoyed school. It, you know, it made me happy, but it was pretty normal. But really, the question that I started with was, how did I get into engineering? So for me, I was coming towards you know, the end of school, and people started asking me that question of, you know, what is it that you actually want to do? What do you want to be? And all the things that come to mind are what you hear around you of, do you want to be a lawyer? Do you want to be a doctor? You know, do you want to be a vet? And to me, they, although they're great careers, I just wasn't inspired. And then someone, like a family friend, said to me, well, have you ever thought about engineering? And in honesty, I hadn't. So, you know, I, I guess I looked at my skills and questioned whether it was viable, but I did the thing that everyone does. I went onto Google, and I just searched, what's an engineer? And actually, these photos displayed here are a lot different to what I got 10 years ago. I'd say that it's a bit more modern. 
Um, but certainly, when I look at these photos, is that I see a lot of tooling and you know machinery and pipes and parts, and it really surprised me because I don't know about you, but I thought of an engineer as maybe more like a mechanic or someone who comes to like fix the washing machine. Um, and I certainly didn't expect these pictures. But the other thing that this search did not give me the answer to was, well, what is an apprentice engineer? Because that's the thing that I was actually looking into. So again, I searched that. Engineering apprentice. And these pictures look a little bit more diverse, but it's still that question of, well, you know, what, what do they do? Like, I, I don't understand these pictures. But what I realized by looking and doing a bit of research is that whether or not I understood it at that moment in time, it actually really excited me. I wanted to know what they were doing, how they used that machine, how they made that part, and what they were doing. And I was curious. And that's the thing that actually led me into engineering, is that I wanted to know what these people were doing and how. So I did it. I applied for an engineering apprenticeship. And I was really lucky. I only applied for one, and I got it. So I was a technical apprentice. And through that, I just did a range of placements going through our different engineering departments. And I ended up in the service engineering business um, for oil and gas, and looking specifically at gas turbines. And it was the most incredible experience. And when I was training, I learned to run machines and I learned about aerodynamics and performance. And it was really exciting. And I studied topics that I didn't even think like I would enjoy, but I absolutely loved them. And by the end of the three years, I just knew that engineering was for me. So when I came to the end of my apprenticeship, I decided that I was going to go and do a role which I'd done as a placement. And I actually became a performance engineer. So I was responsible for the performance of gas turbines all around the world. And being in this role, it gave me the opportunity to actually go out to different countries and actually run performance tests on gas turbines. You know, this is multi-million pound gas turbines. And at the age of 19, I was responsible for them. And that's pretty epic. So after a few years, I decided, you know, I've, I've absolutely loved being a, being a performance engineer, but let's diversify a bit. So I became an analytics engineer, which meant that I was coming up with new ways of monitoring the gas turbines and making sure that, you know, we detected issues before they actually resulted in failure. And I'm really proud that some of the techniques that I came up with during this role are actually still in place today, protecting gas turbines all around the world. So then back in 2017, I decided again, it was time for a bit of a change. I loved being a core engineer and making things and implementing change, but I also wanted to drive projects forward and lead people and be responsible. So I took on the role of being the engineering program manager for remote diagnostic services. It's a really long title, but basically I'm responsible for the end-to-end -end implementation of remotely monitoring gas turbines all around the world. Currently, that value is over three billion pounds, which is pretty amazing and a little bit scary when you say it out loud that I'm responsible for that. But really, it's an amazing job, and I absolutely love what I do. So what I thought that I'd do today is actually just go through a bit of an example, because I've talked about you know, my career and my highlights, but I've not really talked about the big problem. And I'm going to be honest, there is problems in this industry, and especially being a woman. As Amanda said earlier, there's only 12% of women in engineering right now, and it means that we do come up against bias. So the picture you can see is Qatar. It was an amazing place that I went to a few years ago. I was the lead um, technical support engineer and I went out to give guidance to that customer. But I didn't really understand the culture. And when I got there, I had a little bit of a shock because actually women's voices and opinions aren't equally 
valued as men. And that was a really big shock to me, and I just didn't really know how to deal with it. But I have a great visual example to share with you. So I went actually out to the gas turbine site. So in Qatar, they have in the middle of the desert this huge industrial city, and it's called Ras Lafan. And I was there working with my colleagues, and then it got to lunchtime. And in these types of places, everyone downs tools at lunchtime and they go to the canteen. So I went with my colleagues to the canteen and, you know, walked into the room and it became immediately apparent that I was the only woman there. And there was a sea of a couple of hundred guys and everyone's eyes turned on me. And you know what? It was awkward, but I'd, <laughs> I'm a little bit used to it now in this industry being, you know, the only woman in the room. So that didn't bother me too much. So I just carried on. I went and got my lunch. And then I went to go sit down with my colleague. And then I just felt this guy trying to grab my attention. And he pointed over to the corner of the room. And I sort of looked to where he was pointing. And I saw this sort of like greened out, dark, dingy corner, in the, you know, tucked away in the back. And then I actually saw on it that it had a sign saying, for women. And what this guy was trying to tell me, and I don't think he meant it in a negative way, but he was just telling me that in the corner of the room, there was a designated area for women where they should sit and not be seen and not be heard. And for me, that, that, that was a really big changing point in my career because I stood there and went, no, I'm not going to go sit in that corner. I am equal to every single person in this room and I am going to sit here and I'm going to eat my food. But actually, it wasn't just about where I ate my food. It was about me as a person in my career. Is that up until that point, I had been doing what people expected of me. But I decided to take a stand and actually make sure that from that point forward, I was seen and I was heard. So I didn't want to end on a really negative point because being an engineer is the most rewarding career ever. I have done some absolutely amazing things over my time. I have traveled the world, worked on gas turbines. You know, I completed my degree whilst pregnant and then had a newborn at my graduation. Um, I've done loads of speaking and STEM events and it's the most rewarding thing ever. And then more recently, I've been doing a lot more video recording and speaking. So as Amanda introduced, I was part of the IET uh, Young Woman Engineer of the Year Award last year, where I was recognized as one of the top six um, women in engineering in the UK. That's amazing. And then most recently, I've actually been made the brand ambassador for Siemens Energy. So currently, if you go onto our website, my face is just plastered at the top. A little bit embarrassing for me, um, but it's great because they followed me around for three days and just recorded me and my family, and it's normal. Um, so I guess my point is that although there is challenges in this industry, is that there are some amazing things that can come out of it. So I just wanted to part and leave you with a couple of points. So I want you to go out and be an engineer. I want you to be seen. Do not go and sit in the corner. I want you to go out and be heard because you have a voice of equal value. I want you to be the absolute authentic you. Do not let anyone change who you are as a person. Take every single opportunity that you can with both hands. I want you to believe in yourself because you are absolutely amazing. And most importantly of all to me, I want you to go out and absolutely smash those stereotypes. Thank you so, so much for having me. My name is Amber O'Connor and I promised I would sneak in some cars, so there they are. Thank you.